Hi, good morning everybody. Now, if you look back at my videos on my blog, I did something similar to this on the 18th of February, but that was more about the whole contents of my cupboard. And because I'm in cloth book mode now, I just wanted to show you these cloth books that I've put together in a bit more detail. So this piece that I've showed you before in videos over the past week, the seed stitch piece, um, that's actually been worked on some more. I've added layers here, I'm stitching layers down at the moment. This will be a page in a cloth book, okay? And it'll be put together probably in the same way as this one. Okay, you can't see it. Can you? There, this one. So this one, I don't think this was the first one I did, um, but they all kind of evolved around about the same period of 12, 18 months through classes that I was doing. So this one in particular, has got something extra to show you, but for now, so this is the first page. They've just got a simple header silk stitched on the top to keep them all attached, and it's a flip up kind of situation. So on here, there's a plique, there's gimp, there's couching with bullion knots, there's cross stitch, there's folded handkerchiefs, there's a bit of cut work, and um, some padded applique, the lace at the bottom. With this one, let me just see if I can see if that helps. So this page, um, all the techniques are quite similar, they just worked in a different way. Um, I've got, I like pom-poms, I've got pom-poms on there, I've got patchwork, um, some scrunched up cloth with some little pom-poms attached there, again cross stitch at the top with long sequins hanging off them, buttons that I made, handmade buttons along the edge there, but what I wanted to say about this one, on this edge here in particular, this is a folded handkerchief, beautiful vintage handkerchief that's folded. So I was in the mood, when I was doing this one, I thought the backs, I don't mind looking at the back of work, I don't mind people seeing the reverse of my work, and I like the reverse of my work because it's evidence that you've been there, and it's not always the neatest, it's not always pristine, but I thought it needs a bit of recognition, it just needs a bit of recognition. So I started with this one to embellish the back, the seams on the back. So on this seam, which is the seam from oh, caught up in the thing, the seam from this run of couching, I've put some little pom poms and beads. Okay, and at the bottom edge, there's folded handkerchiefs on the front of there, creating like a pocket at the base of that one, with cross stitch down there. On the back of this one, on the edge of that seam, I've done buttonhole lace. I just think it's nice to. I don't know. I mean, if I buy vintage cloth, I don't very often buy vintage cloth that's been embroidered, I have to be honest with you. It's mostly handkerchiefs and things that I buy. But if I do buy something that's got embroidery on it, I treasure it. I treasure it. And I look at the back and I treasure the back because I think about the person that did it and how many years ago they did it and how precious it is to be privileged to see that. Okay. So again, here on the seam, I've done some buttonhole uh, stitch. So, and then this one, is just more couching with gimp, some French knots, some beads, another, this is piping cord that I've stitched over with bullion loops, I've got a plique and then at the bottom handmade buttons on the edge, they're very heavy, the weight of them is lovely. Um, at the back, I haven't done anything on the back of that one, but this one, just buttons simply attached, so these buttons are attached with bullion knots. Up here there's bullion knots with beads on, okay, vintage cloth in there, padded applique, a pleated bit of silk coming out of some cut work, more cross stitch, more bullion knots with sequins on, a little bit of hand embroidery, a folded handkerchief, and then on the back of this one, I went all out with this one. So on the back of this one, prairie points that you can also see from the front, but then this sleeve, of hand embroidery laid over the back because I just think well it's it's just me probably just me but I do like this and I think somebody in my class once well I don't think I know uh, somebody in my class once worked with the inspiration and the end game of the reverse of a work to compare stitches from the front and the back if I'm wrong she'll tell me but um yeah and that was a wonderful investigation I loved that she was doing that and again here buttonhole there and there on the reverse just to neaten it up just to well not even to neaten it up because look at this 
okay. I mean, you might think, oh, I'm hiding that, it's raggy, but I, I don't care. Um, buttonhole lace again on that one. So that's that one. That's probably my favourite one. This one, it's, it's quite big. It's a lot bigger than the last one. So these were samples that I was just making and then didn't really know what I was going to do with them. And then I thought, no, I'll just mount them on silk. So rather than just mount them on the silk, I worked the silk to complement the sample. So this was just a sample that was made, this one here, okay, placed on this piece of silk and then this came afterwards. So it's got the same ribbon in it that's on the sample. It's got sympathetic beads that marry with this. <coughs> and then some handmade ball buttons that I made along the top to secure it into the book. And again, the back is Liberty fabric, but again, going back to the reverse situation, I've embellished the Liberty fabric, I've put a channel on, put some ribbon through it, I've done French knots on ribbon. This one, so this was the original sample, and then added to this something very simple, because this is a very light sample, it's paper up here, and lace cloth down here. So there's a row of French knots there, sympathetic to this, and down here, some little tiny things I cut off some fabric, like little stars and I attach them with tiny pom-poms and again the back embellished ribbon pom-poms down here ribbon with French knots okay so this one this was the sample this bit here placed on here and then I made some massive Suffolk puffs to complement this that live with that because I've used the same fabric so these all just this just started off as just the samples okay and then the pages were embellished to complement the samples. Um, and again, on the back, ribbon and French knots, tiny little pom-poms on ribbon, um, hand-stitch patches of Liberty fabric. And then this one, so this was the sample, okay? And then on here, the same ribbon, but edged with tiny beads. Um, and that complements that sample. And then again on the back, French knot, sorry, bullion knots with beads, ribbon with French knots, ribbon with French knots, that's a channel, the ribbon going through that. So, and sometimes I never know when to stop, but I don't think that matters. I just want to go on and on and on and on. I mean, so that doesn't matter that you never know when to stop. Don't stop. If you don't know when to stop, don't stop. It's simple, you don't have to. And this one was another format I tried um, that I haven't really given a lot of thought to recently, but I might start thinking about this. So this is a cover, I stitched a cover, it's Brodery Anglaise, it's embellished, there's cut work, bullion knots, beads, web stitches, a little bit of applique fabric, uh, lace frill with French knots up here so the fabric there I covered some buttons with that fabric so that's one two three there some vintage buttons these ribbons are fastened underneath these are for tying it closed so what with this one what I was trying to do was make the samples movable so I just put the headers on the page randomly that one has got a prairie point under the ribbon and then these are just pinned in <coughs> Excuse me. These samples are pinned in. And my thinking there was the movable. So if there's another sample that could live in here, I could move this to make room for the next one, um, if that makes sense. So they're literally just pinned in. Um, and I'll keep an eye on this. I'm a bit paranoid about rust. I mean, it never happens, but do you know what I mean? I'm just like, better keep an eye on And there's this prairie points up there as well. Um, I don't think it would ever happen, but I do keep an eye on it for that. And then another one down here that's movable. And then this one is... So then in the spine... Do you see these pleats? I put pleats in the spine. So this sample is pinned to a pleat, okay? As is that one, okay? Um, this one is pinned to a pleat. I love this one. This is actually... I bought this ribbon in France. Um it's initial ribbon and it doesn't mean anything apart from it says PR which are my husband's initials um, 
but yeah, I like this because I like this is to me like a little um, card of embroidery the way I've done that. Um, so again, that's pinned to the spine. That one is pinned to the spine, and then when we get to here, again we've got these panels to pin more samples on, and this one is pinned there. But again, it's movable, and for further embellishment there, I've made Suffolk puffs with the fabric that I covered the buttons with at the front. Um, so yeah, so I actually like this format. I might try and investigate this format more um, to do another one of these. So and when I'm closing them, you have to be really careful because I can't iron these um, because they've got embroidery on. I never iron my embroidery. So you have to be careful when you're closing. Don't crease it all. So yeah, so that is a different show and tell from last time. Excuse me, because um, because I didn't really go into that much detail on it last time. And I'm looking at these samples, and these are really going to inspire me going forward with my next cloth book. They really are. Um, so there, just a little bit of a, a closer look. A closer look at these things and I put this pom-pom on here I said that in the last one and I didn't know if it was going to stay but it has stayed so happy days so that's those three okay 